this is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. With that, let's get up to Buffalo. Standing by at New Era Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. There's a look at New Era Field here in Orchard Park, New York. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with Ryan Tannehill and the visiting Miami Dolphins. Brandon Garden, Charles Davis, happy to be with you. And Charles, we've got two teams who know each other extremely well. These division games, they tend to be battles. People scout like crazy in this league, but no one scouts more than within the division. Because if you win your division, you're automatically in the playoffs. That puts extra emphasis on these games, and they can't wait to get at each other. The Bills' Steven Hauschka's got this one teed up, and off we go from New Era Field. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. Ryan Tannehill will be orchestrating the offense, the top 10 pick back in 2012. A terrific athlete, started at wide receiver before becoming the starting quarterback at Texas A&M and also took his studies pretty seriously as well. He was a biology major at Texas A&M, planned to become an orthopedic surgeon, but being the eighth pick in the NFL draft, that paid just a little bit better. They go play action here on first down. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts him in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. First carry for Kenyon Drake. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. First down, Drake, down to the 30 after a gain of three. And here now a look at the Dolphins' offensive unit. One of the things I've always enjoyed about watching Kenny Stills play is his passion for the game. You can tell he absolutely loves being out there, has a ball when he's out on the football field. But the other thing, he can fool you. He looks like a slot receiver, but runs great routes from the outside and creates big plays downfield. The throw on second down is Tannehill. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. 
And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Tannehill finding stills, and it's a Dolphin first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. First foray into the red zone for Miami. First and 10 at the 19. From the red zone now, Tannehill looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Gray. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that could be pinpoint here. I was, I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Now from the nine, here's second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. The kick by Sanders is good. And the opening drive for the Dolphins yields three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. So here come the Bills on offense for the first time. It's Josh Allen that'll be orchestrating the offense, a 6'5 quarterback from Wyoming. How about 54 touchdown passes in two full seasons at the University of Wyoming? Coming out of a junior college, I think he exceeded expectations. And he can move it around a little bit, too. A much better athlete than people give him credit for. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore first how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. The face mask moves him all the way out past the 40 now for first down. Here we go now. After the penalty, it's McCoy. Nice footwork by McCoy. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Quickly now, here's the Buffalo offense. In the NFL, we love to talk about bloodlines and how important they can be. 
And for Zay Jones, he's got a terrific one. His dad, Robert, longtime linebacker in the NFL, big time with the Dallas Cowboys. And his uncle, Jeff Blake, a starting quarterback in the NFL at one point. Wonder if he played catch with Uncle Jeff in the backyard a few times growing up. Now Allen throwing on second down. And he rifles one incomplete. Jeremy Curley, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. As we shine the spotlight on T.J. McDonald, I see him as a prototypical old-school strong safety. In the box, run enforcer, doesn't play as well in coverage, although he can do it at times, but at his best against the run game. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, it's Allen. And that is incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Green 39! Green 39! They do go for it. Here's Allen. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. How about them biting off 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive? Well, peel back the curtain, partner. We've got a pretty good look into how they plan to play this game. Aggressive seems to be the word. Going for it on fourth down in that situation. Yeah, opening drive. Now, we know this coaching staff, they have traits of aggression in their history, but what a start to this game. They're going for it. Yeah, a lot of people might say reckless, but they got it. One for one on fourth down here early in the game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Chris Ivory with his first carry. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score, and we're back to upstate New York after this. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Bills in possession. They've got it second and six to start things out. can actually keep him in front with that speed. Hauschka adds the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. A drive that time of six plays, and it culminates in a Bills touchdown. now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. A chance for us to look now at the Bills defense. And a big reason they've got the lead here in the first half. Some of these hits we're going to see here. 
almost like they're a group of superheroes, right? Something out of a comic book. Boom, pow, biff. They are really playing well and making things happen on their side of the ball. Taking me back to my childhood a bit. There you go. You had a collection, didn't you? I did. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Here's Tannehill now on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Tannehill now to throw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Tannehill with a hook up to Parker for the Dolphin first. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill. And still is over the middle. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to sling this deep down into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Poyer, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. And now out come the Bills. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Now let's go! Green 39! Green 39! Cut. So after the INT, it's Allen. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And they do finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 41. A big play here for the Bills, 47 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield, but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. some time right on the run he'll let this go deep right side and it's knocked away and 
and incomplete. It was a safety Rashad Jones that time who was able to break up the play. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Allen again here on second and 10. Flush to his right. Now on the run. He'll throw it back deep over the middle. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown of this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. So that's what that elbow in my ribs was all about. You thought they were going to throw the ball as well. Absolutely. I think everybody thought they were throwing the football. Caught him off guard. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you have the courage to make that type of a play call, a lot of times you actually get rewarded. So first and 10 now from the 30. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Buffalo after this. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. On second down, Ivory. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. First trip to the red zone for the Bills. They have a first and 10 at the 18. We got four. We got four. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And he's gonna have to eat this one as down he goes. Robert Quinn in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Throwing now is Allen, escaping the pressure right. This is caught, and he doesn't quite make it, taking it with an eyelash, dropped at the one. That one goes for 24 yards. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage, back to the four-yard line. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Here we go now. Blue lining. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. On the ground, Ivory. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter.
So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Hauschka's kick is good. So we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half. So we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Gunn. Terrific return here as he gets it down all the way inside the 30. But whatever the relationship was between the special teams and the offense, it's gotten a heck of a lot closer after a return like that. The special teams just keep setting them up. The offense thinks they'll go out there and knock them down. now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter they have the lead now they'll be looking to extend that lead and this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them you've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done they're going to make their adjustments so guess what you adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Second and 10 now from the 27. Allen off the play fake, fighting to stay upright. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. They certainly thought they had him surrounded and probably thought they were going to get him on the ground and get the sack, but he was able to elude that. And even though it threw it incomplete downfield, if you're a defensive back, you're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Complete. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the ten to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence. And that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. They'll try to run with Ivory. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. He'll get it up the middle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. On third and short, the fullback DeMarco, and he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Only a yard there, so it brings up fourth and goal. Well, big man with ball, net bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. It's 
So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Hauschka's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So it's an old-school extra point that counts three times. So it's certainly a disappointment they weren't able to get it in the end zone. Yeah, I can just imagine post-game, head coach looking at the box score, 19-yard field goal, grimacing a little bit, but having to realize that at that moment, getting three points was vital. Go ahead and get the points, put them on the board. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Neutral zone infraction, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game down. for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So this helps to start a drive. After the penalty, it'll be first and five. Drake off the give from Tannehill. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Now on first down, break again. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Second down, it's Drake. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Tannehill off the bootleg. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Lorenzo Alexander. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And Charles, they only needed a yard there. They try to pass the football. What do you think? Well, I can't really go all out and kill them for the call because that third and one fake and throw it over the top for a big play, that often does work. But in this situation, the pressure got to him. Here's Matt Hawk now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll try to get the running game going here with Ivory. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Yeah. 
So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot. Patriot. Again, they run. Again, it's Ivory. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. The tackle that time by William Hayes. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen rolling to his right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right. And this will be caught at the 30. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. It's a big play for the Bills on third down. 59 yards. In our pregame meeting, all they talked about was keeping him hemmed in and wanting him to make his throws from the pocket because they knew he was pretty dangerous if he got outside. And he just showed it right there. Pretty good arm, too. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. It's the Bills with a lead and the football here to begin the fourth quarter. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and ten just outside the red zone. Throwing on first down is Allen. Benjamin with it over the middle. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Here we go now. Blue lining. Blue lining. Carry number ten now for Ivory. And strong running there as he's inside the ten and down to the eight-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. On second down, it's McCoy. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. Now let's go! They'll go with the keeper, and he takes it in across the chalk for a Bills touchdown. Josh Allen, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Bills will add on to their lead. Instead of having to play follow the leader there, the leader led. I like that. And he likes that, doesn't he? First and goal, let me do the job. Because you know when he falls into the end zone after falling behind those big, big guys who pushed up front, that's a pretty good celebration, isn't it? Gives him a little street cred in the locker room, too, doesn't it? Street cred, and then when they go out to dinner afterwards, he's still picking up the check. 
Hauschka with the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it was capped off by the quarterback sneak for six. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Dolphins' offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time, he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Here's Tannehill. On the right side, open is Gasicki. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first down, Tannehill looking middle, and it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Back to the air, Tannehill on second down. He dumps it off to Dre. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. He lost two there, and it's third down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side, but for lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. Adam Gase rolls the dice. It doesn't pan out. And the Bills are going to take over in excellent field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Back onto the field now comes the Bills' offense. Been a very strong performance for them, really, on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs, the most recent example. And now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the Let's way go. out. Three, 19. On first down, this is Ivory. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The defensive end, Cameron Wake, brings him down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside. 
and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Stay on the ground. Ivory again. And a nice spin into some open field. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 15 yards that time. And a Buffalo first. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I can be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> we got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down. Hurry up, here we go. Green 39. Green 39. Hot. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. Clock counting down toward 40 seconds as they take the knee. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bills are victorious as we say so long from Buffalo.